Uh, I'm Michelle Alimazi, currently based in London, UK, but originally from Italy and Congo DRC. And I'm working as a senior strategy consultant, mostly for foundations and trust. So Michelle, like I said, I wanted to hear more about the mapping that you were doing. So I can you walk me through the thought process of what you were starting to do, where this came from, and then how you came up in developing the idea itself? Yeah, I think it was mostly, so it was probably the second session we had with the cohort. And we started kind of thinking through some of the areas of focus, inquiry areas. And when I went back to the mural, I saw like all those posted notes, very mm -hmm. scattered, and I'll say, okay, now it's my turn to add my post-it post notes. And, and I was, okay, that looks really confusing because there were like multiple layers, like in the, focus on the individual, focus on the community, focus on kind of today, focus on historical uh, injustices. And I bet, okay, before I am, I can even start thinking what's my position or what, what's my uh, area of exploration. I need to kind of uh, make some order, make some sense around all those different perspectives. And then I just started clustering all those faucets in other mural and saying, okay, there are those three more linked with uh, more personal reflections or individual journeys. Uh, others more linked with uh, like historical injustice, like the heaviness of, kind of the colonial heritage and past and so on. And so I started like this grouping on, on a mural and trying to figure out commonalities of kind of each cluster and the difference between those. Uh, and the two main uh, axes, the two main elements were one about time, so they were thinking about the past and things as they were, uh, the present, like current conflict of power and industrial intentions, and some more aspirational uh, ideas about kind of the future, the visions, and, and so on. That was one element. And the other one was about the level of deepness, the, the individual, and then what I kind of called the community. So all every organized group, basically, uh, group more on two people. Yeah. Uh, and then systems, the kind of the combination of different communities and all kind of the links connected. And I started playing around with those two elements, kind of the time and the three layers. And at the beginning, I was thinking about kind of the ocean, like islands, then it didn't sound right in my head, you know, islands, isolation. Uh, and I ended up with kind of a map uh, of kind of a mountain uh, terrain, which each layer is basically kind of one layer of the mountain, and and then I added other elements, kind of like that is is that word that I cannot pronounce. It's is this well the slow the the narrow piece of uh, land in between kind of two oceans or two two body of water. Like how how did you even come up with the idea of like oceans and then mountains in a map? Is that just sort of how you've been trained to think, or is there something that prompted you specifically here that was like I want to try to visualize this a little differently? The specifics, so the mountains, the oceans, that were mostly linked with the topic, uh, by exclusion. So in in my mind, there were like different ideas of. I basically start with post-its and like circles on, on mural like sketching. And then some of the options. So for example, when I said the, the concept of having archipelagos, like different islands. Yeah. Uh it just didn't sound right because that even like the the shape, the shapes will carry a meaning. So having like visual visualizing kind of an archipelago different islands isolated by body of water. It felt to me, following especially the, the second conversation we had about kind of communities and how communities engage with, engage with each other, uh, that sounded too, one, too static. Usually an island kind of cannot move. 
uh, freely and cannot kind of integrate or merge or have a dialogue with the other. And yeah, and kind of the idea of the ocean was kind of cute in my mind in terms of kind of the flows. But then there was the missing element of time. So it was kind of thinking about myself kind of walking through the mountains, like this journey. So what the identify the destination. So there were like some idea about vision. At the same time, identify like the direction. So sometimes you have to kind of move your direction around because there are like mountains. You want to go to the mountain, you want to kind of avoid some mountains. And at the same time, the, the conflictualities that might emerge. The two mountains might be in the same place, maybe very close, but take two different approaches. Forward. As you were going through this and starting to map things out for yourself, were there any interesting insights that came up for you that you may not have otherwise realized um, if you didn't do this activity for yourself? Yeah, I think especially with the additional elements, so kind of the two oceans on the side, uh, thinking about even within the conversation around, well, within and outside the conversation around the colonization, there are other moving part, moving system. Probably the, the easiest to, to describe is uh, funding a project around the colonization versus funding a project on climate change. Funding a project to cover both, but then you might not fund a project covering health. Uh, so there are like a lot of moving bodies and at those three levels, three layers, that everything is happening at the same time. Uh, so you might be kind of a health professional, but working in a kind of an organization, working toward kind of uh, decolonizing your system, but at the same time being part of uh, a community that hold a lot of power in your uh, geographical space. And so I, all, all those elements, I think, Kind of the visual elements can help uh, to map those out and give people like the flexibility to move things around. And probably in the kind of in a written format that's harder to, it's lower to digest and tensions are slower to emerge. And I think it's, I mean, for us in this journey, it's helpful to raise uh, questions and tensions. The importance of raising the tensions here is so critical because um, especially in the work of decolonization, it's not like there is one answer X, then therefore Y, right? There is so many things, as you've mentioned, so many different lenses to be understanding, so many different forces in the world of different oceans, different bodies of water on this map that are impacting us. And it leads to a lot of uh, incongruencies almost in how to approach what do, what do we do next? Or heck, how do we even um, imagine the world? Were there any interesting um, tension points that came up for you? Or as you might imagine for people moving using this in the future, if that's what you want, or if you just want this to be a visual, what might be some of those tensions? I think the, the main tension that was for me, and I guess going to be for others, like removing all the explainer, having just kind of the image as the for me, is the question about, am I a mountain or am I the explorer across kind of moving in, in the map? And then that, like amongst all the, the questions and the tension that probably the most important, like how you, I, where do you identify yourself? Uh, in which role, in which kind of, as part of a subsystem or as someone like moving in between uh, or is it kind of the map of a journey or is it kind of a static map of what's happening right now how the power is distributed among different systems communities and individuals what did you come up as for yourself were you a mountain were you an explorer i think both <laughs> i think that's the right answer so, yeah so i think because for me it was both Kind of the present and so it was kind of static and dynamic so the picture of what it is even think about the future what is 
the current understanding of the future that might change in the future. Uh, so mapping out, okay, here is what I can see. Here are all the posits, and here is what I can see. Uh, it's not complete. There are like many, many more posits and concepts around that I cannot see from here and from this mirror. Uh, but at the same time, it might be also kind of a strategic tool thinking, okay, if I am here in this position uh, and I'm living on this mountain, uh, but I want to get to another place, what's the journey I should take? What are the other mountains I should cross or the path I should take? Uh, what are the kind of the helpers that can kind of support me on, on the road? So I think uh, like that, that there was this, this quote I, I came across about like the map is not the terrain. I think like the process of building the map was as helpful as kind of walk in the terrain. What if we were to do this activity again with a different group of people? What would that lead to? One thing might be so now there are like three levels in the yeah. community and, and, and system. Uh, what if instead of or in addition to individuals, there were kind of households or families that wasn't something that emerged in this cohort, uh, but perhaps in different kind of culture or in different groups, that might be something even more prevalent than communities or individuals. Uh, and even like communities is a very broad term that I kind of use to each kind of groups, grouping, even like national level or international level. Uh, what about uh, organization, companies, or yeah, so was I think the the benefit of having all those these technologies is that we can kind of make and remake, remodel and re co design that can negotiate around kind of borders, interpretations. Uh, so I'm kind of expecting someone saying it's sort of like one maps have been used as kind of one tool. And two, but also I'm thinking about uh, Pacific Islander, the map of the oceans, like as a way to identify where uh, waves, streams, currents were kind of guiding their boats. So there is always this tensions and kind of duplicity, uh, polarity. So I think there is, yeah, having those digital tools we can always make and remake is, is an ongoing process. Yeah. I think that's it, right? Like the process of making and remaking is the work because it is so different in different contexts. And so that just like really sits with me right now because there's so much in in doing this work of bringing people together from around the world um, and trying to have conversations around decolonization that are so different in every context. It looks so different in India, where I said, as it does in the US where I grew up, it like looks so different for different communities as well. Um, and so it is that it, the, the fact that this map is not static is what makes me love it so much is and for so many other reasons, it's also very pretty. Um, but I think it's like, the the fact that it, this isn't like a a tool or a framework that you stick with and stay in um, and be like, this is the way that we're going to go. First, we need to find the perfect map. We'll build a map and then we go forward with it. But the the fact that, no, you actually have to be making, remaking it through new conversations uh, and still acting as a mountain or an explorer or both in different settings um, is is so important because that's the way that we contextualize and like a bring in our process of learning and adaptation into this. I'm curious, uh, Michelle, is this, like, as you've gone through this and had some time to reflect on, how has the process of being a part of this collective and this cohort brought, enabled this thinking, or is this something that you've just always thought about and you finally have a place to do more of it? Mm -hmm. um, in a very consulting way, I would say both. <laughs> so I've been kind of trying to, but probably I discovered kind of mind maps 20 years ago now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so what was kind of always with me the kind of the idea of, okay, there are different concepts. How can I connect those concepts together? I think in, in this case, that was even like more challenging, uh, both 
because of kind of the the topic itself and how it's very kind of thin highs trying to it's not as easy as okay you have to plan i don't know how to arrange your library here are the books and they are inanimated kind of objects so you can say okay here is the cluster with books about geography history and then you can create some visual or some map or some mental framework to connect them. In this case, like those ideas that were kind of shared and concept and worldviews were kind of really dense in terms of meaning. So with a, a, a lot of layers under it. Uh, so it was, yeah, so it was a challenge. I think it was uh, probably kind of a mental gym <laughs> in, in a way trying to kind of stretch the the mental muscle in, 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 in trying to kind of understand what was really kind of compressed into sometimes like one word or two words. So I felt kind of, because of the topic, because of the, the composition of the cohort, it was challenging, inspiring. Uh, but yeah, just kind of the, the starting point. I think that's such a... Um... It's really cool that you were able to just take the initiative and do this um, for yourself and be like, I'm going to figure it out for myself. And that this potentially might also influence what you're thinking about in terms of experimentation within the collective. I remember in our last session, you were asking questions about how these visuals might be a tool of sort of bringing people from different parts of the world using different languages together to build that common language am i correct in describing that like can you tell me more about how you were thinking about that yeah i think it's so probably kind of around the power of stories and kind of common narratives uh probably my take was if we want to kind of collaborate as a, as a collective we will need to find like a, some kind of agreement of what we mean one with what when we say what yeah. and how those things uh, connect to each other. And so what, one specific instance, so I'm now based in the UK, I've been here for the past three years. Uh, one of the challenges that I'm facing is how to bring experiences from other parts of the world, excluding the US, you know, like just from close by, like France, Italy, uh, here and kind of sharing the ideas uh, without encountering kind of uh, cultural resistance or preference from ideas from other areas of the world. And ideally, well, that, that experience, uh, visual and stories can help a little bit kind of uh, passing this, this obstacle. And if I'm thinking about the Pacific Islander example, there is a museum here in, in London with a kind of some example of how they were mapping uh, kind of roads, kind of waves and, and so on. And a lot of UK individuals are visiting the museum and learning from it to say, oh, so probably if the entry point is visual or is tactile or is a story, my land better than, than it is. I don't know, a book or uh, some experts coming from another part of the world presenting, making the case for uh, an approach, uh, models, and activity. About how can we use stories and visuals and frameworks to present ideas, to combine and present ideas across communities and across systems? And I'm curious if that sort of impl if this activity, this process, and this, these questions that you're able to ask here, how has that impacted um, the way that you're showing up in your work outside of the collective and just your day-to-day -day work? It doesn't even have to be work. Like, how are you showing up as an individual? Has that changed? I mean, it's a great kind of uh, safe space and mental gym. I will have to find a better way. But like the, the concept is, so if you're doing sport, you are kind of training and then you have like your match in, in the weekend. Probably in our work, we are having like the matches across the week, but without kind of the gym or a training space or like a safe space where to experiment. 
So ideally, I would like to kind of have something similar uh, across the year, basically every week, like a place where instead of kind of uh, building your stamina and muscle before running a marathon, you can just kind of try and test and fail and remake, uh, well, in this case, models and frameworks and concepts. Uh, and then, of course, can kind of be uh, adopted by others and kind of shared and so on.